Femi Falano he is a senior advocate, senior advocate of Nigeria, and he is also the legal advisor to Omoyele Shore, the convener of revolutionary protests. In an interview electronically conducted, Falano explodes. He said, We are ruled by incompetent, ignorant, and lawless individuals. He was asked, Sir, what do you make of this administration's established propensity to always put the cart before the horse in making major policies that should be backed by law? What is becoming the norm at the federal and state level is pronounce the policy first, then scramble around for the enabling law. He responded, he said, the nation was under all manners of military dictators for close to three decades, even through civil rule, even though civil rule was restored 21 years ago. The leading characters in the democratic structures are either former military rulers or those who had served under them. In fact, there was a time the president, the minister of defense, minister of police affairs, national security advisor, chief of staff, and chairman of the ruling political party were all retired generals. So the civilian government was a quasi-military regime. Even though the number of former military rulers have been reduced, the mindset of the political and security chiefs has not changed. Public officers are still sacked with immediate effect while people are detained for months or years without trial. The Buhari administration has never hidden its disdain for the rule of law. In some interviews, President Buhari has expressed frustration with the slow speed or the accountability prerequisite of a democratic dispensation. The regime has openly justified disobedience of court orders under the pretext of defending national security. It does not seem to appreciate that the security of the state is maintained under the rule of law. Even when the regime was compelled to release Omoyele Shore and retired Colonel Sambo Dasuki from illegal custody last December based on court orders, it came out to say that it was an act of compassion or generosity. With such pre Torian mindset, the regime does not consider the legal implications of its actions and policies. Since the dramatist personnel in power believe in the rule of might and government is bound to take decisions without the backing of the law, we are ruled by individuals who believe in the rule of rulers and not in the rule of law. It was asked, you no longer sue government for illegality and unconstitutionality of actions with the same frequency of the past, unlike your mentor, late Ghani Fawemi, who did not stop taking government to court until his death. You appear to have mellowed into advocacy and jurisprudential guidance. Why? He said, I am afraid your information is not correct. Recently, a bunch of paid Lupin elements staged a protest against me in Abuja, for purportedly using the courts to blackmail the federal government. Can you believe that? The fact is that due to increasing wave of official impunity of the government, I have filed more cases in court than ever before. Unlike in those days when all our public interest litigation cases were dismissed for want of local standing, the situation has changed due to our persistence and doggedness. We have recorded some huge success in using the instrumentality of the law to change official impunity in the country. For instance, our law firm won the case over the right of every child to free and compulsory education, basic education at the expense of the state. We have won the case to have the People's Bank restored. We have also won the case that stopped a contractor from collecting SEPAC fees from all expatriates in Nigeria. We have won the case against regulation banning police women from marrying suitors of their choice without written permission of a commissioner of police. We won the case against obtaining police permit for rallies and demonstrations by aggrieved citizens and groups. At the same time, we have lost many cases while others are pending in courts. One of the cases which we lost at the Federal High Court has to do with the right of Nigerians to basic health. The case was struck out due to lack of local standing. We are pursuing the appeal in view of the threat posed to the health of all citizens by coronavirus pandemic. In many instances, our public comments and those of others have forced government to reverse certain illegal policies and unpopular programs. In such circumstances, we have refrained from going to court. I am sure that is what you mean by saying that I have retorted to advocacy and jurisprudential um, guidance. 
asked the presidency of Major General Muhammadu Buhari really used to advocacy and plea, which possibly explains the refusal to withdraw soldiers from COVID-19 regulation enforcement duties, despite the killings of innocent Nigerians with their guns. How does one tune the ears of a government like this to the voice of reasoning? He said, whenever the people have persisted in their demand or agitation, the regime has been forced to change its position. For instance, the regime had supported the state security service in the illegal incarceration of Mr. Omoye Leshawara. But when the demand for his release in and outside the court was intensified, the regime caved in and released him. Colonel Sambo Dasuki, who had been held for four years, was also released. Even with respect to the coronavirus pandemic, the regime had said that President Buhari would not address the nation. But when the demand continued, the president had to make a broadcast. The soldiers will be withdrawn from the street if the pressure is mounted on the regime while COVID-19 has claimed six lives on the security forces. Uh, lives. The security forces have killed 13 people. But for the lockdown, I would have rushed to the court. I'm sure you would recall that I got the Ferrari court to restrain the armed forces from subjecting Nigerians to the so-called positive identification parade last year. It was asked, your regular interventions in public matters suggest two things. It is either the government operators are naive to the matter of constitutional democracy or they just want to be deliberately unconstitutional in their ways. Is this not a pointer to the quality of men being elected into public offices. He said, I have found that many actions of government are born out of mischief. They are based on sheer ignorance. You may call it political naivety. That is what is playing out in the United States where President Donald Trump exhibits such degree of ignorance mixed with arrogance. Contrary to the Likonian definition of democracy as a government of the people, by the people and for the people, Borgil's democracy is generally a government of oligarchs or cabals. The crisis of government of governance is more problematic in a country like Nigeria, where democratic structures are weak and the people are not conscious of their rights. With respect, we are largely ruled by ignorance and incompetence. And you know that power mongers who are ignorant are incompetent. Hence, the result to impunity. That is what leads to corrupt practices. In the criminal diversion of public funds, rigging of elections, and setting up a government without regard, in utter breach of constitutional or statutory guidelines. No regime can change the status quo without involving the people in governance. It was asked, the West, particularly America, returned a damning verdict on the 2019 poll, indicting the military heavily. Since this administration appears to always sweep out of line in the matter of military deployment, what are those concrete steps in definite times that could be taken by stakeholders before a degeneration that could lead to a catastrophe? He said the West should not be the barometer for measuring credible elections in Nigeria. Many local organizations have meticulously exposed the monumental fraud that was perpetrated during the 2019 general election. The most disturbing aspect of the fraud was the use of armed soldiers by the ruling party to intimidate soldiers or uh, voters. Under the Jonathan administration, the APC filed three cases against the use of soldiers in elections. The APC won the three cases. Little did we know that the APC was looking for power to use armed, ro armed soldiers to rig elections like the PDFP for whom an election was to do was a do or die affair. The dangerous trend is going to continue unless the Electoral Offenses Tribunal is set up to deal with the riggers and manipulators of elections. More importantly, politics has to be redefined so that political parties can be positioned to serve the interests of the people. Right now, politics has become a cheap avenue for self-enrichment and self-aggrandizement. It has nothing to do with public service. It was asked, have you seen enough transparency in the distribution of palliative at the federal and state levels, particularly the open money sharing venture of agents of the central uh, government. It said the federal, state and local governments were not prepared for the kind of emergency that the nation is going through. The mechanism put in place for reaching out to the people under the special advisor on social investment, Mrs. Marianne Wears, has been abandoned by those who wanted to abolish the program. The cash transfer policy of the federal government was ridiculed by the media, neoliberal the government and the private sector people. Some of the business tycoons were indebted to the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria, Amcon, to the tune of over $5 trillion. I've questioned why a loan of 10,000 naira should be given out to a rural person who, those who ran commercial banks around and plunge a country to toxic debt, conspire to scrap the people's bank. Even though the federal high court has ordered the federal government to restore the bank, the neoliberal handlers of the economy have continued to frustrate the revival of the bank, but the same people are now contributing to the fund being packaged by the federal government to cushion the negative impact of corona pandemic on the poor and vulnerable segment of the society. 
Having abandoned the people, the government cannot effectively manage the palliative. The process of distributing the process cannot be transparent enough because the government is administered on the platform of opacity and secrecy. Considering the criticism trailing how the cash is being moved and shared and sustained agitation by Serap to for better accountability, how do you think the palliative measures should be handled both at federal and state levels? He said the federal government should rely on the information and data of citizens that are genuinely poor, which has been compiled by various agencies. The criminal elements who have diverted money and materials meant for internally displaced people in camps will not hesitate to corner the funds earmarked the purchase of food items um, for the poor vulnerable people this is where the media and other civil society organizations should come in to monitor the disbursement of the incentives i am aware that the ministry of humanitarian affairs um, invited serap to be involved in the identification of the beneficiaries and monitoring of the disbursement of incentives however instead of buying food items money should be transferred to the poor and vulnerable people otherwise the system may end up enriching few food contractors and suppliers it was asked do you think that beyond attacking covid 19 the government should encamp our hospitals that have been abandoned he said in the 1960s our hospitals were some of the best in the world they were well encamped and manned by world-class medical professionals but like many other national institutions the hospital collapsed under the military by the end of the second republic they had become consulting clinics that was the observation of the head of the military junta general muhammad Buhari, in january 1984 84 and the hospitals have become more mortuaries instead of fixing them top public officers have been traveling abroad for medical treatment at public expense general ibrahim babangida was hospitalized in paris in the 1980s 40 years later buari goes to london for regular medical attention at public expense the demand for equipping local hospitals and arresting the masses uh, arresting arresting the mass exodus of our trained medical personnel to foreign countries has fallen on deaf ears the masses of our people are killed by preventable diseases like cholera, polio, meningitis, tuberculosis, malaria fever, and Lassa fever. Just imagine the hypocrisy over the fight against the coronavirus pandemic. Isolation centers are springing up while some public hospitals are being fixed because members of the ruling class cannot travel abroad as there is a global ban on foreign travels. Unfortunately, the pandemic has claimed six lives in Nigeria, but in the first quarter of this year, Lassa fever has killed 188 people and the figure is rising. The labor unions and other progressive forces should ensure that public medical centers are fixed during this crisis. The medical professional bodies should compel the government to supply masks, ventilators, and build molecular laboratories. Nigeria should contact Cuba, which has produced interferon alpha 2b drug, which has so far proved to be the most effective vaccine against the pandemic. In fact, Italy and not less than 37 other countries are being assisted by Cuba to fight the pandemic. Can you imagine that a third world country? Has been invited to assist a member of the g20 even the united kingdom had to rely on cuba when scores of our nationals who were in cruise were stranded in the caribbean territorial waters the pandemic has destroyed iso isolationism and glorified internationalism it is a sombre lesson for countries that have been promoting ultra nationalism can you believe that the united states has received assistance from china and russia Capitalism has never been challenged to this extent. Every serious country is now providing funds for the health of the people and making funds available to keep jobs. Loans are being made available without tough conditionalities, while debts are being rescheduled or cancelled. The global economy can never be the same again. The health challenge has made a strong case for a new international economic order. Asked, video clips in the social media suggest underhand dealings in making Lagos residents comfortable during the lockdown. Now residents are getting more agitated and emboldened to flout it. Despite Funke Akindele episode, how do we bridge this gap of trust in public leadership considering the huge goodwill that trailed this government into office? He said, having failed to address any of the problems confronting the people, the government has carelessly lost the popular goodwill. Because of official alienation from the people, the federal and state government imposed the lockdown without any arrangement for the poor and the vulnerable people as well as daily income earners. At the time, it dawned on governments that incentives had to be provided. There were no reliable data to work with. That fact that government did not provide adequate information, the erroneous impression was given that everybody was entitled to incentives. For instance, the federal government has just stated that anyone who has up to 200,000 naira in their bank accounts would not be entitled to the cash transfer of 20,000. I am aware that based on the abuse of distribution of the incentives, the Lagos State government has been compelled to review the entire policy. It is hoped that the crisis will, be, will compel the federal and state government to learn to take governance much more seriously. 
Trump wanted to impose quarantine on New York State, but Governor Kauma kicked against it on the ground that the Constitution does not allow it. Can President Buhari impose regulations on any state under a federal system of government? He said the United States is a country of former independent states that came together to form a union. Hence, the motto of that country is Pluboros Uno. That is one union out of many. For that reason, the states have continued to enjoy a high degree of autonomy. The President of the United States has no power to impose quarantine on any state. Our own federalism is a unitary system of government. The quarantine order of 1926 was a colonial law which metamorphosed into a federal enactment in 1960. Quarantine is item 54 in the exclusive legislative list in the second schedule to the 1999 constitution. So the president can impose quarantine on any area in the country. However, under the Quarantine Act, state governors are empowered to make regulations outside the areas covered by the president. Therefore, the argument that Governor Wiki acted unconstitutionally over the arrest of the Cavendon pilots because aviation is the is in the exclusive legislative list is become when the river state government made the regulation did the federal government challenge it with respect this is not the first time that nigeria has fought an infectious disease under the law the spanish flu of 1918 was fought under the colonial ordinance of 1917 not only was there a lockdown in lagos the homes of people were inspected the flu which claimed 500 000 lives out of a population of 80 million nigerians led to the enactment of the quarantine act of 1926 when I was writing my book on Nigerian law and socio-economic rights, I found out that the Quarantine Act needed to be amended. We pressurized the National Assembly to review the colonial law. To that effect, a bill was actually passed by the Senate under the presidency of Senator Mark, David Mack, but the bill never saw the light of the day. Once this particular lockdown is over, we are going to mount fresh pressure on the National Assembly to amend the Quarantine Act to reflect current reality in the country. So, he was asked several questions and um, a lot of questions here and there so what do you guys think about his response as this open your, your eyes more to see um, the reality of the day let us meet at the comment section below